Yeah, okay. Live chat, blah, 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 blah. It kicked me out. I had to restart. Sorry about that. It was a massive pain in the ears. Go away, fly. I got kicked out, I had to restart the um, the thing again. I don't know if this is going to work. Maybe, oh no, it will, it will, okay. <laughs> Could we see the video? Sorry about that guys, I, basically um, I think I wandered too far down and I lost the signal and um, so I lost the whole thing, but I, I'm back. This is how it looks. So there's the sea and distance, the salt pans, Neolithic rock area. Uh, God knows what this was used for. There's giant nails in the floor and all sorts of crazy stuff. I think at one point maybe the sea came up to here because there's all sorts of water erosion, but I don't know. I'm not a archaeologist guy. <laughs> it's working again now, so I'm happy. Yeah, I was just saying, um, hello Sarah, hello Kenneth, hello Jeff, hello Dan, H hello Christian. Hello, fatalized guitar. Hello, Liam. Good to see you all. Uh, yeah, I've got loads to tell you because I've kind of, I've been doing a lot of things over the last few months, um, in particular working with one guy. He's really fun. And I hadn't had the chance to sort of just catch up and just say hello. So I've got loads to tell you and then I'll take any questions you might have about anything in particular. Um, so the first, I suppose the first thing is I'm, I'm fully recovered now. You probably know I had COVID and I got pneumonia. <clears throat> I was really, I was just destroyed by it. It was awful. But I'm, I'm back feeling kind of pretty much up to normal again. I can sing, been writing tracks for clockwork and getting all the vocals written, melodies and lyrics and everything. And it's been really fun. So that's been good. Hello, Germany. How are you? I miss Germany, actually. Nigel Buttigieg, isn't he, Martin? He must be. Thank you very much, guys. Yeah, no, I'm glad. <laughs> Not just me, the whole family. Thank the Lord that um, we are feeling better. So, yeah, that was fun. Anyway, um, recently, I've been working with this guy, and it's really unusual, exceptional circumstances. I wanted to talk about it because it's kind of... It's just made me think all sorts of philosophical thoughts. So, you know, I did this Kickstarter and um, it was to raise funds for the Clockwork Wolf and Company album. And I had this perk on it, which was fly to Malta, spend a week here, become the monkey lord. And I was like, no one is ever going to buy this. I mean, in a million years, it's just not going to be a thing. It was set really expensive. It was this crazy idea. And to be honest, the label created that perk as kind of a marketing flag that people would look at and, that, and then they would like talk about it, but they might buy lower price perks. Uh, never in a million years did the label or I think that somebody would, oh, oh, listen, would buy it, but somebody did buy it and they flew here. Oh, I was hoping to get this lizard for you, but it's just crawled off. Uh, and I knighted somebody, the Monkey Lord. <laughs> and I wanted to tell you about it. So basically, this guy messaged me on Instagram. I got a message. And he said, I'm just about to buy the Monkey Lord perk. And I was like, are you serious? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I thought, man, I need to make sure he's the right person. I can't let him just buy it. But what if he's... What if he's the wrong dude? What if I make somebody weird or, or bad or I don't know what if it's for the wrong reasons or or what if they just have a horrible experience and then it's not worth it for them so I gave him my phone number <clears throat> and we had a chat and it turned out that this guy Mark big ginger bearded father of, of two kids he'd inherited some cash and rather than just like you know buy a car bunch of guitars a few amps just get a load of gear and that kind of thing. 
he wanted to invest in like experiences, memories, you know, that kind of thing. And I thought that makes a lot of sense. I can understand using an inheritance to buy memories and experiences. And he said, you know, I've never been to Malta, haven't been a holiday for ages. I've been following you for years. I'd love to come over. And, and for me, it's all about the experience of, of hanging out and doing stuff together. I thought, fine, okay, we'll do this. So after a lot of deliberation, he went through and paid for this experience to become a monkey lord. Anyway, <clears throat> fast forward, he flies over, I meet him, and immediately we know we're going to be mates. He's one of those people that you just you can't help but like him. And um, I won't give away too much because we shot a documentary of the whole experience, and actually it's, it's on YouTube to see now. If you go to um, Ferritone Studios, Ferritone is spelled P-H-E-R-T-O-N-E, Ferritone Studios, you see the documentary of me taking him to this, this ancient fortified city, which I can just see from here, but you'll never be able to see it from where I am. Um, and I knighted him, the Monkey Lord. And then part of that experience was to come back to the studio. We got cake, tea, that kind of thing, hung out, had a drink. And then he could pick any guitar from my collection to take it home with him. And that was a bit of a twist. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you because I don't want to ruin it. But if you watch this little documentary, you'll see what the twist is. Anyway, I wanted to plus one it because I kind of thought I didn't think somebody would buy this. And if you're the new monkey lord or one of the new monkey lords, it's important to me that, that this whole experience is really cool. So we wrote a Christmas song together. My first ever Christmas song. And then we shot a music video together. And that is also live on the Ferritone Studios YouTube channel. Uh, we hired an old classic Maltese bus called a Shadowbank. And we drove around Malta like we were on tour. And <laughs> we had a lot of fun. It was absolutely batshit crazy, but it was cool. So anyway, there's a new Monkey Lord. I'm, I'm called, I've nicknamed him ML2, like he's Monkey Lord 2. His name's Mark Evans, and his YouTube channel is Ferritone Studios, as is his Instagram page. And I would urge you to go follow him, check him out, say hi, because he's a really nice guy. And his channel has been dubbed Anderton's on a Stag Do which is the exact reason I decided he was the right person to work with. <laughs> anyway, so I've done all of that. I've, I've been doing this Christmas single, music video, um, had him come over and chill. I've been working on the remaining tracks for Time is the Enemy. Um, and I've been doing, you know, writing and recording for Criterion, which has been really fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, and get a guitar. <laughs> Eric Warrington, it wasn't gracious of me because Mark paid me. So it was something that he paid for. I mean, I added things to it to make it absolutely worth it because I kind of felt like I didn't want it to reflect badly on me and I wanted to make sure that he had a great experience. So for me, it was important that he really benefited from the whole process. And in fact, I, I have been developing, teaching and coaching Mark for about two to three months now. Um, so it's been a really fun experience for me to kind of take all of my working on YouTube knowledge and experience for 15 years and try and cram it into his little ginger bearded head. <laughs> and actually he's really good. And it's been really fun. But yeah, um, I've got something else to study, which is a little bit sad. But did you feed him? Oh, man. If you've ever met me, you know that I fed him. We went to, um, you know, dirty little breakfast places. We went to <clears throat> Imdina, had beautiful cake, although it was so hot. It was like sunburn territory. So we had to be a bit careful. But I fed him. I fed him a lot. Hey, Carl, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. What's Malta food like? Maltese food is like Italian food with Arabic influence. So you get pasta, 
baked in a pastry pie with spices and got a tempana. It's beautiful food. Lots of pastries, pasta, loads of meat. Just all of the good stuff. A lot of cheese and meat, basically. It's difficult for me. <laughs> no, it's nothing like arboreal assault. Um, at some point, I need to revisit my Monkey Lord musical project and do... If you don't know, uh, <clears throat> a while back, I recorded an instrumental project called Monkey Lord, which was just me on a guitar, backing tracks, just playing. And what I wanted was like ambient, meditative music with melody. So it was, um, it was my, my attempt at doing something progressive rock ambient. I really enjoyed it. Actually, it was some of the most rewarding music to record because it was, I went in with concepts and themes, but I hadn't written anything and I never do that. And everything that you hear is 100% improvised. All of, the, all of the guitar melodies, the riffs, the chord parts, all improvised. Um, we, I only used, uh, we constructed backings from, from visualizations like, okay, it's a forest clearing, or maybe it's rocky mountain terrain, or maybe it's, you know, somewhere else, glaciers. Had that visual in my mind, and then I just played and improvised, and, and it's Monkey Lord. Chromatic Aberration was one of the singles from that project. I'm going to be doing more of that because I quite miss playing. I mean, my roots were in, you know, Joe Satriani, Marty Friedman, Steve Vai kind of thing. And I miss playing instrumental guitar. So I'm going to be doing more of that, especially with the new Chapman guitars that are coming out next year, um, of which there are quite a few, I might add. Um, hello, Portsmouth. How you doing? Good to see you. Having your coffee. 7 a.m.? Bro, it's 12.15 here. Chromatic aberration is the best thing you've ever done. Thank you so much, man. It was definitely the hardest thing I've ever done. Uh, <clears throat> hard because when you're improvising, but you know it's being recorded, you have to try and let go of that aspect of being recorded and just be in the moment, purely experiencing the music. I found that quite hard, but hey Tom, love you too, bro. But it was really fun. Anyway, <clears throat> I have some sad news for you. And um, I figured I'd do it live because it, it might just, I can answer questions about it if I need to and then I'll make a generalized post. But sadly, Dorje um, has come to an end. It is no more. Uh, it will not be picked up on and um, it won't be carried forward. And um, it, it's, it's a real shame. We, you know, we had the best part of an album's worth of content uh, written, prepared, ready to go. But, um, you know, Ben quit. Had to do loads of work stuff, had a couple of kids. Um, Dave actually works full time for well, me, Chapman Guitars. He's the head designer. He's quite busy with that. And Rabia just, he's, he's not in the place where he wants to continue with Door Jays. He's enjoying his other musical projects. Obviously, he and I are in different countries. And um, so, Bia and I had a chat, and, and he sort of said, you know, I, he wanted to bring it to a close. Not that he and I won't ever work on musical stuff together again, but that Door J, we've closed the door on it, that's what it is. So, it's sad, <clears throat> it's one of those things, but you know, to be honest with you, we have a lot of other musical projects through which Door J will always kind of breathe bits that you'll recognise as coming from that vibe, that place. So for me, I mean, the content that we wrote, I think we wrote eight songs, we're probably going to pull it apart and I might use three or four of the riffs that I had written, either in Monkey Lord for instrumental stuff or in Clockwork Wolf and Company, although some of the lyrics work better um, in Clockwork than other places. but. Basically, the material will be reused, and I know Rabia wrote a bunch of bits. He'll probably use that on some of his projects and things. And um, yeah, just seemed right. I mean, I suppose it's it's disappointing because what I really wanted was four EPs to fit into a perfect 
<laughs> you know, image and to sort of finish it off because the tracks had been written. But in another way, it's a new planet now, a new life. I live in a different place. I've got new bands, Revere's in, in the same headspace, really. He's got new things going on. And um, I think it was just time to say goodbye to that and move on. So yeah, there you go. Kind of some beginnings and some some endings. I'll take some I'll take some questions. Oh my god, there's a lot of them there. Yeah, life goes on, man. Hello, Switzerland. Thanks, Remo. Yeah, vinyl. <laughs> <clears throat> Vinyl is taking a long time to manufacture, which is very irritating. <clears throat> In fairness, you own and run what is a pretty huge guitar manufacturer. Yeah, it's not easy. I do have a massive, what, mass I have a team of very skilled people that do a lot of the work. So I do day-to-day -day bits and I have a role, but I couldn't do it without them. Any, Liam Cook, any new Chapman shapes or models that we could expect at some point? Yes, there's a whole load of new guitars coming out next year. And uh, <clears throat> new shapes, no, but maybe some shapes that we haven't made for a long time coming back. So I think that's going to be, look, you're going to love it. There's really cool new stuff happening. Great new colors, some tweaks to shapes. Dave has been working really hard on the ergonomics. You're going to see interesting new cuts and things. Hey, Randy. Good to see you, bro. Um, and yeah, it's been, it's been tough with factories shutting and opening and shutting because of COVID all the time. But, you know, we, we've managed to deal with it. So there's going to be some cool stuff coming out next year. Hello, Scotland. Ian Cousins. Rob, if you could go back, what would you do? Would you do anything different? Would I do anything different? I would have taken myself more seriously as a vocalist earlier on. I was only playing at it. I didn't really want to be a singer. Um, I did singing because the other singers that we used were all into drugs and stuff and I really wasn't and it was just something I kind of had to do. So for the first few years of singing with Dorje, I sang for a tour or sang for a recording but never sang daily or built up my strength and I think that was a mistake other than that no everything that happened was supposed to happen the way it did and I'm glad that it's turned out this way uh... hey Rob does Chapman guitars have a signature pick up or a go oh a go to set of pickups <clears throat> Chapman has a bunch of pickups we make that we fit into some of the guitars um... I want to talk about something, but I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it. <clears throat> yes, more Monkey Lord. Last album was so great. Thank you so much, dude. Yeah, please go and listen to my Monkey Lord EP because I really think I undersold it. I didn't do a lot of promo for it. I just kind of put it out. Uh, the whole thing was an experience for me, something I needed to do. And I didn't do it as a kind of a commercial release. It's just instrumental guitar. Monkey Lord. And the album of EP, I think we called it Chromatic Aberration. It's not signed, it was a self-release, by the way. Uh, new Ghost Threat? Couldn't possibly talk about that. What do you think of Ola? He's, he's a bro. Of course I know Ola. Ola and I have known each other for years. He's a great guy. I, I love that um I love that there are people like myself and Ola and others who have guitar companies and we're guitarists I think the future of the guitar industry will be much stronger and happier if it is based around communities supporting each other focused around individuals that care and for sure I can say that Ola and I care uh, about coffee and food Drew, any idea when the new Chapman guitar lineup will be released? Yep, next year. Hello, Hamburg. Yeah, Cal, tell me about it, bro. That's why I'm solo, don't have time for that crap yet. I know exactly what you mean. 
Uh, any chance of a repress of the first Clockwork Wolf & Co EP? Yeah, actually, <clears throat> I have hundreds of Clockwork Wolf & Company In The Sunshine EPs on vinyl, coloured, limited edition, done. I just never sold them. At the time, I was just, I didn't have... I didn't have the time or the know-how or I was so busy, so focused on Chapman, I didn't have time to put them in a shop and sell them. So <laughs> believe it or not, I've got loads of CDs and vinyl of In The Sunshine um, that will be available for purchase probably from January. Um, we're just going to pick them up from the storage and I'll hand them to the record label so they can sell them. So if you wanted In The Sunshine and vinyl, we've got you. Uh, is it true that the Azure window in Gozo felt? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Can you post about how you did the effects, for example, background used for chromatic aberration? Well, that was really down to uh, the guys in the production. Um, Graham May was was part of the team. Graham May is, is a really good friend of mine. Was the bassist in the Black Hand, one of the, one of the first bands I was involved in played bass for Osric's Tentacles. He's a fantastic musician. And um, he really would be better to talk about that. It's lots of samples, things they actually recorded, blended together, tweaked, and worked around a storyline that was given, basically. That's how, I, that's how we did it. Uh, play press. Did Lee Anderton play on your solo? Yeah, so Lee, I, I coaxed him into playing. He'd never he'd never recorded in the studio before, and um, I was like, "Come on, man! You can't <laughs> you can't be Lee Anderton running one of the best guitar shops on the planet and not actually record in the studio." So on Clockwork Wolf and Companies in the in the Sunshine EP, um, <clears throat> he plays half of the solo on Flash Flood or part of the plan. Oh man, which one is it? I think it might be part of the plan. Uh, you'll see it in the credits on, on, the, uh, on the album. He did a really good job. He was nervous as hell, but he did a great job. Uh, do you still use gravity picks? Yeah, sometimes. Um, you know, just because I form a relationship with another company doesn't mean that I have to be exclusive. I'm not exclusive to anybody. So I use gravity picks sometimes. I prefer to use my new brass pick because they feel great. But um, yeah, whatever's around. Has Chapman Guitars ever considered constructing a guitar out of non-wood? I would, I would really like to make a guitar from bamboo, but it's, um, I don't know how we would do that. Any chance of a tuition of Dorje tracks that you guys shot at Brighton Electric a couple of years ago? Uh, I don't know, Dolo. That would be a question I would need to ask Max, our tour manager, who I think was involved in that. Absolutely did, epic news. How many videos do you shoot at Anderton's? Liam Cook. So when I go to Anderton's, uh, I normally shoot eight. I shoot four a day over two days. And... Um, it's, it's hard work, but really, really fun. Uh, Mr. El Gato, are you working on any new music videos? Yes, I am. Um, Turn Off the Sun from Clockwork Wolf & Company's last EP, uh, Church of the Wolf. We're working on a music video for that right now. We're looking for caves to film in or nearby, because I think that would be cool. Uh, will we see the spoke wheel truss rod adjustment return? I hope so. I love that. It's been difficult to manufacture. <laughs> part of the plan, yeah, it was part of the plan. How do you not break strings with a metal pick? Well, I have a really light grip with my pick, to be honest. Um, marshmallow. <laughs> if I wanted to get a guitar with a single pickup in the center position, could we send you some music? Yeah, you can always send me music. Just, you know what? I'm on Instagram all the time. Um, Rob underscore Chappers. 
if you want to send me music, send me a message uh, with a link and then I'll, I'll try and systematically get through it all. It's the only place I ever really answer messages from because Facebook is just too busy for me. So if you want to use my Insta, Rob underscore Chappers. How come you've never been on that pedal show? I've never been asked. I, I know the guy, Stan and Mick, I've known him for years, but I've never actually been asked, to be really honest with you. I guess they just, maybe they just don't think I'm interesting. I, I guess that could be it. Uh, do you think you might ever put out a line of Monkey Lord guitars? Yeah, maybe. That might be something that happens. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'm so invested in in uh in chapman i don't know how that would work i have thought i have hon i have honestly thought about that but i don't know it depends depends on whether monkey lord brings out more music that is successful because the, the previous ep people that love people that listened to it really really liked it and were really touched by it but not a lot of people listened to it because i didn't push it i didn't give it any kind of a i didn't promote it or pay for any promotion anyway it was just it just went out and that was it and I made one music video, but it was, it was a graphical, I didn't play in it, you know. I probably should have put more thought and effort into that because it was an important project, but I don't know, important to me anyway. Um, you're welcome. How about Danish Pete? Has he played on any of your tracks? He will do, but he hasn't. So I'm hoping to get Pete to play a bit of lead on um, Time is the Enemy. The whole thing is being recorded live um, at the studio here in Malta, and then probably Pete would would send some some music through. So I say that basically all of the the guitars, the bass, the drums, everything is being recorded live at the same time, and then I have to overdub vocals because otherwise there's too much bleed on the condenser mic for the vocals. But I, I really I wanted Clockwork to have an album that was like rough and and real and raw. And, and not this polished, clean studio thing. I'm, I've come bored of that. I want to leave the hair on. So Clockwork Wolf and Company's new album is all going to be live. My favourite albums are live, like UFO, Live at Last, or um, I don't know, just like Rattle and Hum. Great albums. Pearl Jam 10 kind of has a live vibe to it. I much prefer live stuff, so I want that for it. Uh, Cowell, goal next year is to become a Chapman artist. Cowell, your goal should just be the best version of you possible. And if being an artist for any company comes from it, then it should be their honour. Anyway, the cooler finishes like MR3 Carthus Burst come out cheaper models. It's difficult because we make guitars. There's a load of misinformation out there, actually. I noticed this, quite funny. A lot of people seem to think they know a lot about Chapman, but they really don't. So we make guitars in two different factories, one in Korea and one in Indonesia. And the reason our Indonesian guitars are more affordable is because we use more affordable building methods. Um, so we don't do neck throughs, we don't do nitro, we, you know, we, we just keep it simple. Uh, bolt on construction, you know, veneers, that kind of thing. They're still really good quality guitars. And in fact, I find myself Honestly, more often than not, playing a standard Chapman. I've got this new prototype, ML3 with a P90. It's just fucking incredible. Um, I'm using it all the time. So, yeah. The reason that we can't do crazy finishes on those is because it costs a lot more money. And then people go, well, wait a minute. This guitar's from Indonesia. It's from Chapman standard range. Shouldn't it be more affordable than you go, well, no, because it costs more. So yeah, um, maybe there can be a Monkey Lord special edition that can be a more premium run of guitars. I think if, if so look, I'll level with you. There are two other brands I, I, I've had in the back of my head for the longest time. Um, a brand called Monkey Lord and a brand called Sutherland. And um, over the years, I have been interested in producing products from those two brands, but I really need to make sure that I focus my attention on one thing at a time 
because what I'm very good at is biting off way more than I can chew. And, and I think right now, more than ever, it's important that I focus on Chapman, the Clockwork Orphan Company, which is why Dorje is no more. Well, it's not why Dorje is no more. It's why for me, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to let go of Dorje, um, as was Rubia. And it's, it's why, although I have, I continually come up with these cool things I want to do, I really need to focus on the things that I've done, you know, and deal with that. Uh, can I check your guitars in Ireland? I don't think we have a dealer there, but I really, you do really need one. You got your Silver Jubilee today. Well, wow, congratulations. That is awesome. So anyway, the reason for this call was just to say, uh, please welcome the new Monkey Lord, Ferritone Studios. Mark Evans from Ferritone Studios. He's a great guy, he's very funny, he's a talented musician, and uh, you'll find him at Ferritone Studios, P-H-E-R-T-O-N-E-S Studios on YouTube and on Instagram. Please go and say hi uh, and uh, salute him. And, and you'll find on his YouTube channel, the documentary that we shot together with a little twist at the end and a music video that we shot together for our Christmas Eve. So I guess that's it, unless there's any more questions. Uh, any new left-handed guitars for 2022? Yep. Uh, would you ever do a limited run of 50 guitars where people can fully spec their own Chapman? No, can't do it. It's impossible because that's, that's like a custom shop. I mean, in a way, that's what we do. They're, they're all customized to the mass, not to individuals. Um, the only way to do that would be to have some kind of, you know, workshop in the UK that could do it for us, but <clears throat> no. What do you think of Black Stars 1 Series 200 Warhead? I haven't played it, to be honest with you. Haven't tried it. Black Star make, I really like the HT5, HT20, and after that they kind of lost me a little bit. Um, even if you didn't play music or have any involvement in music, I would still be a fan. You seem like such a cool... Thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. Thank you very much. Please bring the hot rod back. What's the go with the UK-produced Chapmans? Well, we, we tried it. It didn't work out. And um, I'll let you know how that progresses. Gus G uses that one. The weather, that looks, it's really nice here, man. The weather's amazing. Well, look, I'm going to head back. <clears throat> get my, I say back, I'm actually going to go to a cafe and get myself a coffee because, to be honest with you, one of the greatest things about Malta is that even if you go to, like, a little shitty cafe in the middle of nowhere, the coffee is its just beautiful. It's just such a nice... I mean, it's all, you know, Italian roasted stuff made by someone's grandma on the side of a cliff. And... Um, it's beautiful. It's very tasty. Someone just mentioned bad cat. It's one of my favorite two words, Christian. Yeah, bad cat is badass. If you haven't tried hot cat 30, oh, such a nice amplifier. And um, look at this, it's so nice. Uh, they're sending me hot cat 15 combo, which I'm really excited to try out. Hello, Canada. So it's cold there. <laughs> Merry Christmas, yeah, happy holidays. So dudes, have a good one. And uh, thank you for listening to me waffle on about the end of Door J, uh, Ferritone Studios, and all those kinds of things. Please check out my instrumental work, Monkey Lord, for which there will be more at some point soon. <clears throat> and, uh, and if you're not following Clockwork Wolf and company on Instagram, please do, because we've got a new album coming out, a new live album coming out, music videos, that kind of thing. And it's uh, such an enjoyable lineup of dudes. I've got a really crazy 
<laughs> blog coming out soon that I think highlights that well. Anyway, love you dudes. Take it easy. Happy Christmas. See you all.